Hello, everyone. Welcome once again to the Mint Door podcast. I'm Dr. Laura Schwint. And I am Dr. Karen Tindall. We are so happy to have you here today. And Karen, would you mind introducing our guest today? Yeah, so our guest today is one of our friends, and it's Dr. Yashoda Bhaskar. And she is a physician with more than 22 years experience as a hospitalist and an internist. And she has a special interest, which is lifestyle medicine, um, as well as mind, body and spirit medicine too. Now, Dr. Yashoda loved connecting with her patients, but became a little bit disillusioned with the modern healthcare system. So she changed her lifestyle, moved to Hawaii, became um, an ICF accredited life coach. She's a certified money coach, and she's also board certified in her lifestyle medicine as well, because Yashoda knows that mental and emotional health are the critical bedrocks to overall wellness. So thank you so much, Yashoda, for joining us today. Oh, thank you, Karen and Laura, for having me. It's my pleasure and it's, I feel very honored. <laughs> And this is one of those um, podcast interviews that I would love to have done in person at your house. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I hear that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, someday. Yeah. Well, Yashoda, tell me, uh, initially you loved your job as a hospitalist, but something changed that, that kind of made you want to take a different path. Can you just kind of walk us through the beginning and how that all transpired? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So there was definitely the first honeymoon period and I'd just come out of residency and I joined a group of really smart, intelligent, kind, wonderful, all male, all white, all older group of internists who had probably 300 years of medical experience amongst them. So it, I felt like I got a total second residency with them. Um, and I just loved the science. I just loved, you know, taking care of patients. The structure was very different when I started. It was very much um, adaptable and um, work-life balance friendly. Mm -hmm. So we were really able to set our own hours. We controlled our own schedule. And as long as we got the work done, there was really very little interference from administration or the higher ups. Well, as you all know, um, things change in healthcare. <laughs> and so um, there was increasing pressure, you know, the usual things to see more patients in a shorter time with less help, electronic medical records coming into the picture and gradually sort of dissolution then set in mm -hmm. because it was taking away time from the bedside, which is really the part of medicine, as I'm sure we all know, uh, is what we really enjoy and brings us joy and true um, fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, I think also it was setting in for me that there's got to be more than just prescribing yet another drug, right? Like patients kept coming back to the hospital. They were sometimes sicker. They were doing all the right things. And yet they were going out with another three medications added to And they would just be like, I just don't want to take these drugs anymore. And so my answer always was, we don't have a choice. This is what is recommended to keep you alive longer. Um, and then we can talk about how I, lifestyle medicine came into my life. But that's sort of the long and short of what happened. Yeah. You know, so you've, you've really seen both sides of, of healthcare, you know, and, and I think about physicians coming into it now that maybe haven't gotten to see the the beautiful side that you were able to start with. And so that, that had to be challenging for you to kind of see that evaporate and, and go away. Yeah. I love how you alluded, um, uh, to lifestyle medicine and, um, and tell us a little bit how you got into that then. Yeah. So, like I said, I was going through my own sort of, you know, soul's journey and I was looking for answers both for myself and for the kind of physician I wanted to be. And I came across the whole Health Medicine Institute. I think I've alluded to that. Um, it's, uh, it's really started by a physician by the name of Dr. Lisa Rankin, who um, also went through her own burnout and anyway, created this whole curriculum that op blew up and opened my mind, you know, things like ep epigenetics and neuroplasticity. And 
the whole role of, of spirituality in medicine, which we don't talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we had faculty like Deepak Chopra and Bruce Lipton and Steve Sisko. Like my whole world was open to something that I didn't know existed. Mm-hmm. And as part of that journey, one of the curri- part of the curriculum was also Heal the Healer. And that was really helpful. But um, we, we, had, we, we had like a mastermind and we were thinking about where we would like to meet the following year. And we said, well, let's find a CME conference, right? So we can use like our CME money and we can meet. And one of them mentioned the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. And I was like, what the heck is that? Like I'd heard of integrated medicine, functional medicine. I'd kind of been looking for, like I said, answers, you know? And anyway, so we went to that conference and my mind was blown by the evidence. So lifestyle medicine is really going back to the basics. They believe in like the six pillars of of medicine, uh, which is eating a healthy diet, right? We always tell our patients that, but a lot of times people don't understand what that means. And there's a lot of really bad information and confusing information out there. So the evidence is really strongly supportive of a whole food plant-based diet. Um, don't have to be vegan. I tell people you don't have to give up your meat completely. Um, the second pillar, of course, is exercise or movement, um, stress reduction, right? Social connections, um, giving up bad habits like smoking and excessive alcohol, right? And um, so, so it really spoke to me that we were really touching the bedrock of what we should be t- all talking about but in a much more expansive way and in a way that actually makes it easy for people to understand and incorporate in their lives. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I sort of started doing a lot of those things myself and I definitely saw a change in my own health Mm -hmm. and I was sold, you know? So I became board certified, well, during COVID really was 2020. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping to uh, start a little practice doing that, but we'll Mm -hmm. see, I'm I'm in the initial steps. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. It's just like when you talk about like how medicine used to be, and I remember that t- it just seemed like a simpler time, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then it got so complicated with all the different administrative positions and other people all getting involved in with it too. That it became so complicated that to take it back to lifestyle medicine is almost like you can't reverse time, but you're almost bringing closing the loop and bringing it back to something those those simple pillars once more I love that I love that and you know Karen one of the things I would say is we in healthcare and I'm sure it's true of your audience you know dentists physicians whoever is we're so taught to put ourselves last that we really need to be our first patients Mm -hmm. We need to really look at our own lifestyle, right? And see, you know, are we getting adequate sleep? I think I forgot to mention sleep in my six pillars, but right. So, you know, are we eating healthy? Are we getting enough exercise and movement? You know, are we practicing some stress reduction strategies? Mm -hmm. Uh, Social connections, my God, like there's so much science behind social connections and it's almost, you know, social isolation is as bad as having a heart attack. Like your risks of chronic illnesses is huge connected to these pieces. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you say that, like it makes me think of something that I've heard you say before, and this was your motto, that life is too short to be stuck and unhappy. Mm-hmm. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about what that motto means to you and why now it's an important piece of the coaching that you do. Yeah. Well, two thoughts come to mind. One is as a hospitalist, as you can imagine, I was very close to death. It is not something that's spoken or addressed or looked at um, in culture. When I was growing up in India, it is not, it was not unusual for us to see a, the body of somebody who died being carried down the street ceremonious, ceremoniously to the mortuary or to the cemetery or to the burial ground. Um, And so kids, you know, as a kid growing up in India, it was part of life. It was understood that we all are going to die someday. Like it's literally in your face. You cannot escape it. When I moved here, I realized that was, it's, it's hidden, right? It's like nobody sees a dead body. They can help it kind of thing. And so it causes fear, right? I think fear of death is probably, like Deepak Chopra says, if you can overcome, and I'm just paraphrasing him, 
if you can overcome the fear of death, you can pretty much overcome the fear of anything in life, but that's hard, hard work. Mm -hmm. So seeing that so near and, you know, all the time in the hospital, I used to have a lot of end of life conversations. I've sat by bedsides of people dying and there was a lot of regret right, from these people, they would be like, I wish I had spent more time with my family, I wish I had traveled more. Nobody ever said, I wish I had a bigger bank balance or a bigger house, right? Um, uh, there is a really good book, it's called The Top Regrets, The Top Five Regrets of the Dying. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware of it, and I think her name is Bronnie Ware, and it's, it just really spoke to me. And the second piece was that there's a lot of health problems in my family, diabetes, high blood pressure, whatnot. And my dear dad, who was what I was very close to, died of a massive stroke before he turned 70. And it shouldn't have happened. You know, he was diabetic, hypertensive, didn't really, didn't really pay attention to his own health. And that I think really spoke to me that it was an avoidable thing. He could have still been alive and enjoyed his grandsons today. And that, I think that is my why, when I think about why do I wake up in the morning and go to the gym or, <laughs> you know, or, or eat healthy, even if I'm tempted to eat the bag of potato chips or whatever, is to remember the devastation that was ca caused in my life when my dad passed away, that I went through, I do not want to do that to my children, if I can help it. I might get run over by a bus, right? Like, bad stuff happens all the time. But if I can help it, if it's within my control, then I am going to try and stay healthy and knock on wood. I'm going to be 57 in August, and I'm probably the only person in my whole extended family who's not on a single drug, not, in, not any medications. So I think it is a magic pill, and it works. It requires, obviously, discipline, dedication. And I think coaching, Karen, mm -hmm. to answer your question, is such a powerful tool whether it is for ourselves and to coach ourselves of why these things are important or as we take it out in the world and help people sort of navigate uh, a very unhealthy environment. You know, our mm -hmm. environment is not set up for us to be healthy. Mm -mm. So, mm -hmm. Sorry, kind of a long drawn answer. No, it's a, a great answer. And it, from what I gained from that is you, you obviously are doing things right Mm -hmm. if that if you're the only one who's not taking any medications or anything like that and my my advice my hope is that you just avoid those buses you showed me <laughs> because everything else is good <laughs> absolutely <laughs> maybe that should be a new motto <laughs> life is too short to be stuck and unhappy and avoid buses yes <laughs> yes yes and Karen actually there's two short piece too right um I just came across the title of this book. Um, it's a British writer, actually, and I forget his name, but he wrote a book called 4,000 Weeks, Time Management for Mortals, which mm -hmm. I just found that funny, but also like it makes you stop in your tracks, right? He's like, if you calculate that we live to be 80, let's say roughly, that's 4,000 weeks. That doesn't seem like a lot of, my, a lot of time. And then you take out like one third for sleeping, right? So that's 2,667 weeks left. And then you take out another one third for all the stuff we do, you know, cooking, cleaning, eating, whatever, and, you know, hanging out with friends. 1,300 productive weeks is that. And then you have to sort of cut out, you know, you're not really productive to like maybe you're in your 20s. And then let's like ignore the last maybe, you know, 10 or five or 10 years it really shrinks it down. You're like, whoa, I have 800 productive weeks if I make it to 80, if that. Mm -hmm. And that really spoke to me because you know, we're, you hear these things like, oh, you have all the time in the world. We kind of don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and we see that, right? Even like in coaching, people are like, oh, I'll get to it tomorrow, or maybe I'll sign up for it in six months, or you know, I'm gonna try it on my own, which is all great, but nobody gets to make more time. Even Bill Gates or Elon Musk can't buy more time. They only have 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think that's always in the back of my mind. I shouldn't say always, but it comes up a lot for me. You know, I don't know how much time I have left on this earth. And when I'm laying there on that deathbed, hopefully cognitive and hopefully surrounded by my loved ones, I want to be able to look back and say, you know, that was a pretty freaking damn good run. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
that's sort of my motto, you know, live your life to the fullest, I guess. And I, I think that is available to everybody. I really believe that. Well, and, and to not to bring the bus um, topic back again, but, you know, truly, we only have today, we are not promised tomorrow. And so if you want to live, like you're saying, you know, have a good run, why not do it today? Right? Mm-hmm. Why not Absolutely. start today? And, and I love how you say this with the support of a coach to, to help you you know, navigate the challenges that, that we have. And so, um, and and I do think it's cool that you're, you're walking the walk. So you're doing the stuff that you recommend for your clients. And so that makes it even, even better for them. So, yay. Okay. So, you know, you also on your website, talk about the, um, kind of confusing and taboo subject of money. Mm-hmm. And you are a money coach. So can you tell us a little bit about what brought you to that and how you help clients with, with money? Sure, I'd love to. So while I was preparing for my boards for Lifestyle Medicine and I was on Facebook and I was becoming a life coach and all of this, um, what struck me was, how many people, including myself, haven't really done our inner money work? And you know, my sister always laughs at me. She's like, you gotta always pick the most controversial topic to go after. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, why not? And um, you know, so many people were getting furloughed or had to take pay cuts, and there was a lot of stress and anxiety about money. So I kind of started thinking about it, and I realized that. I had been stressed about money unconsciously and didn't even know it. It just was such a like crazy moment because I was a primary breadwinner and, and I have a lovely, loving, beautiful, lovely, supportive husband who did his part. He worked in Kuwait for eight years and made money. And then I would stay at home. So it was like time to switch, you know, that to plus circumstances. But I didn't want to look at money. I didn't want to, you know, even think about, well, how much do I need before I can walk away from my job? You know, I just, there was something in me that just did not even want to look at it. And my husband kept saying, listen, if you're that miserable, quit your job. You know, we're not going to starve. We'll make it work. And I had put that on myself. I'm like, no, I don't think we have enough money that I can quit and walk away. Like, how would we pay our bills, you know? And so, and this was in spite of us going to a financial advisor in Seattle. And he looked at all our numbers and said, yes, even if you quit, as long as you don't like go crazy, you're going to be fine. And, I, and, and of course, I'm going to manage your money like this, right? Like that, there was that sales thing. I still wouldn't believe them. It, and that's when I realized it's not, about the, it's not about the money. It's not about the dollars. It's not about your bank account. It's not about what's coming in and going out. It starts with here and here, like needing to first understand what is your attitude towards money? What do you believe about it? Mm-hmm. And then, then you start working with that and get to the point of feeling calm, confident. So I went looking and I found this, um, it's called the Money Coaching Institute. And it was a 16 week program and I enrolled and became a certified money coach. We, we really look at sort of, uh, it's, it really involves the field of behavioral economics, if you will. And mm-hmm. looking at subconscious patterns, you know, we develop subconscious beliefs about money, just like we do about a lot of things in our life growing up as children, what are the messages we got from our parents? Was one a spender, another a saver? Were both spenders? Did they go through bankruptcy? Um, All of those things affect us, right? And money's not spoken about. So were there hushed whispers, you know, furrowed brows of your parents, but they didn't wanna, they didn't talk about it, but you knew it was about money, right? So it's that very sort of, that's why the word taboo, it's just not talked about so then we come out and we have our own sort of ideas about it. And when you put a couple together, right? Like you have unprocessed money work, two people coming together. I mean, that no wonder it's in the number one and number two cause of divorce and stress and fights in relationships. Mm-hmm. So the program really takes people through unearthing. It's an excavation project you go deep into your psyche and you get to pull out and examine. So that's the coaching piece, right? 
um, what are the stories? What have you been believing for so long? And we unpack them and then we, you decide which ones to keep and which ones don't make sense anymore. And um, we do do a little bit of sort of practicals around like, hey, you know, you're tracking your expenses, how are you invested? You know, we do talk about that, but it's not financial coaching. It's really money mindset, money behavior coaching. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things, and I've heard you talk about this before, and it's just one of those things that even as you say it now, I'm having the same thoughts as I had last time, but what are those stories that are in my head? Mm -hmm. Why is it that I feel the way I do about the topic of money and so it's just fascinating that I think a lot of people wouldn't even have even be aware that this was a thing they could do mm -hmm. to explore these topics so I mean Laura and I one of the things that we like talking about is how and it's funny that we're coming back to you were talking about how time is limited mm -hmm. and we like talking about how time is like money like you have a bank account of time basically mm -hmm. and how you get to choose to spend that time is really similar to how you get to choose to spend money so mm -hmm. there's a limited amount in there and you can withdraw from the bank or you could put back in mm -hmm. well the difference though is you literally can make if that's your thing you can literally make as much money as you want as you think might make make you happy, but you can make more than time. Yeah. Right? Like Elon Musk is gonna be the first trillion trillionaire, is what I read somewhere. Now we can, you know, one of the things with money is the stigma that comes attached to it, right? And I think when we are in business, I mean, I've never run or started a business or frankly didn't even know anybody in my family who ever ran a business. And when I decided to start a business as a coach I went even though I was a money coach I'm like how much do I charge maybe I'll just charge $25 right there's a lot of like we attach so much of who we are or who we want the world to see us as to that whole thing that there's you go online and there's probably a million people out there who are going to tell you how to charge for your services mm -hmm. right there's like so it ranges all the way from don't give away your services for free. People won't do the work to charge what your worth is, $28,000 or more, right? Mm -hmm. And where in that spectrum you fall rather than listening to the voices outside our brain, can we come back and really find like our North Star? What makes me, like these are my values. This is what I believe in. Mm -hmm. You can't do that if you haven't done the money work. If you haven't really unearthed to see why is it making you uncomfortable to say, this is what I charge for my services, mm -hmm. right? Or I'll just give it away for free because that's so much easier than asking people for money. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's, it's complex. And it's almost lifelong work. I really, I really think it is like the peeling of the onion. You know, you think you've gotten to the core and you realize there's more and there's more. And mm -hmm. it's just like any other aspect of our life of becoming the better version of ourselves. I think, you know, as coaches, that's what we do and that's what we help our clients do. Mm -hmm. It's the same with money. It almost never ends. It keeps, poke, it keeps coming up. You know, you think you've done it and then something else will pop up and you're like, oh, wait, I, I'm not done yet with this. Mm -hmm. what a valuable what a valuable thing to do to to develop the insight with a coach and then you, I imagine that that then translates to you know bringing home maybe children and you can maybe just set a new course for your family's money mindset right we definitely talk about that, Laura, in the program. So I run, I've run them as my, what I call money healing circles. So far, it's been mostly women. I think I've run, run about 10 or 12 circles. I don't take more than four to six people at a time. And we really do talk about that. What is the legacy you want to leave for your children? Do you, do you want, they'll say, you know, I don't want my kids to be as messed up about money as I was, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Um, so it is a part of the education that we can pass on to our children, just like we teach them how to eat healthy. So mm -hmm. I consider it the seventh pillar of wellness. I mean, mm -hmm. this American College of Lifestyle Medicine might not necessarily agree or <laughs> recognize it as a pillar, but I'm like, we should be talking about this. Mm -hmm. And it's not only like, am I comfortable to charge more? That's like, that is not what I'm selling. I am not 
going to be telling you, go charge your worth and why only? No, it's really about what is it that feels good to you. Mm-hmm. And for each person, that's different. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't make false promises. I'm not going to tell people come in and then you're going to have a hundred thousand dollar business tomorrow. Mm-hmm. If that's your, and as a coach, I stay neutral. If that's your thing and you think that'll make you happy, then look, let's look at that. Sometimes people come back and go, actually, no. I do this really one fun exercise in there and it's um, basically asking people, imagine you woke up tomorrow and you won the lottery. Mm-hmm. And then we t- ask some very specific questions and it's fascinating the, the answers that come up, right? It's like people almost go into like a mini shock. Mm-hmm. Like I get them there, I'm like, you, this actually happened and how would that change your life? Mm-hmm. And it's uh, it really shifts because people realize, no, I, I don't need that much to be happy. Mm-hmm. It's a false story that mm-hmm. society put out and somehow I've believed it. And I'm realizing that for myself, I don't need $10 million to be happy. I don't need $5 million to retire. Mm-hmm. I want to have a tiny home and, you know, that, you know, that. so we start dreaming and then we go, okay, how does money fit into that picture? Mm-hmm. Don't let money run you. You get to decide mm-hmm. how you can integrate money and happiness in your own life. Mm-hmm. That's a great exercise. I should do that with my kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should. It's really fun. Yeah. I think it's a, a it's such a positive way to build that as well, that sense of, mm-hmm. of knowing what it is that actually makes you happy. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we have a few uh, fun mint door questions for you. you should. Okay. <laughs> um, if we're going to jump into some of these. And obviously we have the mint door. And when we were creating the mint door, we really carefully thought about what color we wanted the door to be. So if you had to pick any color to paint your door, what would it be and why? Absolutely red. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it is a Chinese symbol of, um, of prosperity and abundance, right? Um, I've always been drawn to the color red, you know, kind of that dark red. I would so many... I should have worn red today, but um, <laughs> so yeah, that's why, because I think to me, we live in an abundant universe mm-hmm. and how better to invite abundance into your life than to paint your door red. Mm. <laughs> I like that. We might have to put a little red, red stars or something on our red stripes or something <laughs> on our mint door. That's a good one. <laughs> All right. Looking back throughout your life, maybe what is something that happened to you that you didn't expect? And how has that changed your life? Oh, meeting and marrying my husband, hands down. (laughs) We had an arranged marriage. We met for an hour and said yes. And now here I'm here in the US. Like my whole life would have been different if I had married someone else and, you know, stayed in India. Coming to the U.S. was definitely not part of my plan. Maybe it was a part of the divine plan, but it wasn't part of mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yay. Oh my well, we're happy you're here because we might not have never, ever met you had you right? not been this no, way. I'm happy to be here for sure. <laughs> yeah. So we often think about what brings us joy. And I think there are so many high achievers that are busy pursuing goals and it's very easy to forget those little things that bring you joy. So we were curious that what would be one of your favorite childhood memories? That you oh, would my childhood memories that brought me joy. Mm-hmm. Books. Mm-hmm. Books. I could never get enough of books that is I just remember you know being curled in a corner of the room I, you know one bedroom three of us girls had to share oh my god <laughs> that was my spot like on the bed in a corner with my books mm. that's what brought me the most joy 
What sort of books did you read? What did you oh like? Oh Everything I could get my hands on. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it Blyton, Nancy Drew, yeah. right? Secret mm -hmm. Seven. Um, I love The Secret Seven. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, and then I reread when my girls were little, I reread The Secret Seven to them, um, every single one of them. Oh, mm -hmm. so great. So great. Well, then I matured to like Harlequin romances. I am a complete, like hopeless romantic. <laughs> hopeless. Beyond hopeless. <laughs> what are you reading right now? Anything? Oh, Brene Brown, Atlas of the Heart. I oh. guess her HBO Max is coming out and... I guess I need to sign up for HBO Max, but I think it's <laughs> going to be worth watching. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Excellent. Yay. All right. Now we have some fun, just rapid fire questions for you. So okay. just top of your head, whatever first comes to your mind. So Karen, you want to start us off? Yeah. It's kind of like a this or that game. Okay. Oh my goodness. So, okay. The first one <laughs> is, do you like to dry your hair with a hair dryer or air dry it? Air dry it. Mm -hmm. Heels or tennis? Oh, tennis. <laughs> <laughs> yoga pants or jeans? Definitely yoga pants. <laughs> <laughs> Early bird or night owl? Early bird. Mm -hmm. Mountains or ocean? Oh my God, that's a tough one. I have both. I have both. I have. I live on Walalai and I have the ocean. Ocean. I'm gonna say ocean. <laughs> Some. I hate climbing up hills, but I love looking at them. Yeah. <laughs> breakfast or no breakfast? Uh, most times no breakfast, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Eat out or eat in? Eat in. Mm -hmm. Hands down. Movie theater or Netflix? Uh, I have nostalgia for movie theater, so I'm going to say movie theater. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And now this is a this is a topical one considering what we just spoke about. Yeah. A book or a Kindle? Oh my god, a book. 100%. <laughs> I'm old fashioned. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Cat or dog? Actually neither. No. I don't want the responsibility of an animal. That's okay. Sorry, Sorry animal lovers. <laughs> <laughs> um a burger or a salad? It could be a veggie burger. Definitely but. a salad. <laughs> okay. And then Saturday or Sunday? Well, I have both now, so <laughs> it kind of is not relevant. <laughs> I would say both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for humoring us with that. Yeah, um, no, that was fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like how it builds a picture of a person when you do it really quickly. You really get to sort of see who someone is. Yeah. Yes, it's true. Yeah. yeah. Fun. All right. Well, you have a couple of free resources, um, Seven Days to Money Bliss and How to 10X Your Confidence, which those both sound really awesome. How would listeners gain access to either of those free resources? Um, my website yashodabaskarmd.com and I actually um, made a conscious decision to quit Facebook and Instagram which sounds crazy but it brought me a lot of peace of mind so as of now I'm only on LinkedIn and even on that I'm not hugely active um, I like my life, nice quiet life and allowing things to flow to me organically and it's working really well so I'm happy with that <laughs> oh it sounds that, lovely it does sound <laughs> lovely it sounds fantastic all right well what is coming up for you in the near future and um and how how could people explore getting to know you better you said your website and so would they contact you on your website or mm -hmm. yeah so I do offer you know a 30 minute free clarity call if people want to work with me on any of the things that we've discussed and um, they can shoot me an email. Um, and I do have a newsletter. I'm not super like, what's the word, um, consistent with it. I do, I do have a little blog so people could check out my blog. If something really strikes me, then I, you know, and it's all on my website. 
And I just uploaded a bunch of other podcasts that I've been a guest on on there. So, but but what's coming up? I mean, yes, money coaching is powerful. People want to reach out for that. I do one-on-one. I haven't done couples yet, but we can certainly explore that. This year, I don't think I'm going to be offering the money healing circle. I just have too many things going on. Um, And then I was mentioning, I think I'm going to be doing a little bit of clinical practice doing lifestyle medicine um and that'll be on my website when it's all ready so that's yeah yeah, lots of offerings and i can help people in lots of different ways yes yeah yeah you you sure can thank you for all the gifts that you share with the world and all the wisdom that you bring Um, this has been a fantastic episode of the mint door podcast thank you for spending some time with us yeah thank you and We will make sure that the links to um, Dr. Yashoda's website and her LinkedIn are in the show notes so that you can find um, her there. And then anything else we talked about, I will link in the show notes. So check them out below. I want to thank both of you, Laura and Karen, for the wonderful work you're doing and helping other women doctors to really thrive in this very complex world. And uh, thank you for having me on as a guest. It was it was really fun. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll see you all again soon on the next episode of the Mint Door Podcast. Bye. 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 <laughs>